A common location of osteoarthritis is the hip. Osteoarthritis is the hip joint. Common pathological conditions of the hip include hip dysplasia and leg perthes disease. Canine hip dysplasia is a common cause of secondary degenerative joint disease in dogs, with incidence as high as 48% in some breeds. Joint laxity is the initiating cause and leads to joint subluxation and poor congruence between the femoral head and acetabulum. This gives rise to abnormal forces within the joint that interfere with normal development and stress areas of articular cartilage. Over time, the joint degenerates. Owners typically report a slow, progressive onset of clinical signs that may include difficulty rising, reluctance to play, decreased activity, reluctance to jump, hind limb stiffness or lameness, pain, and a bunny hopping gait. Hip dysplasia is proposed as a polygenic trait developing from genetic and environmental factors. The hips are normal at birth, but uneven growth between the muscular system and the skeletal system results in dorsal and lateral subluxation of the femoral head from the acetabular cup. The abnormal development is thought to result from a delay in development of muscle mass in conjunction with too rapid growth of the skeleton. Excessive activity, high caloric intake, and obesity worsen the condition. Changes associated with progressive hip dysplasia include joint laxity, shallowing of the acetabulum, flattening of the femoral head, reduced prominence of the acetabular rim, decreased femoral head coverage by the acetabulum, subluxation of the joint, reconfiguration of the femoral neck and greater trochanter, thickening of the synovium and joint capsule. Additional changes may also include focal degenerative articular cartilage lesions, periarticular deposition of reactive new bone, anthesiophyte Morgan line on the caudal aspect of the femoral neck, acetabular sclerosis. Leg Perthes disease, characterized as a non-inflammatory aseptic necrosis of the femoral head, occurs in young, small-breed dogs. Dogs with leg Perthes disease present for chronically progressive bilateral or unilateral hind limb lameness associated with secondary osteoarthritis. Dogs with leg Perthes disease become lame at an early age and present with hip pain and atrophied muscles in the affected leg. Radiographs reveal increased radiopacity of the epiphysis in the early stage. This progresses to femoral head flattening with developing clefts of femoral head and neck subchondral bone. In the advanced stage, the femoral head is grossly deformed and collapses. Although the cause is unknown, histological findings suggest the disease is a result of infarction of epiphyseal and metaphyseal bone. The vascular supply of the femoral head is solely derived from epiphyseal vessels that enter the epiphysis along the borders of the joint capsule insertion line. Synovitis may cause sufficient interarticular pressure to compromise some of the blood supply, causing complete or regional ischemic insult to the epiphyseal spongiosa and its marrow. Advancing osteoclasts from the site of infarct remove necrotic bone marrow and tissue elements, giving rise to creeping substitution within the epiphysis. This haphazard process leaves poor support for subchondral bone, giving rise to focal collapse on weight-bearing. Medical management, including NSAIDs, weight control, and physical therapy, helps reduce the pain but does not change the course of leg perthes. Surgical intervention is often pursued at the time of diagnosis, with a femoral head and neck excision as the treatment of choice. The prognosis is good in small breed dogs. Total hip arthroplasty involves removal of a disease joint and replacement with a two component prosthetic, an acetabular cup and a femoral stem. The procedure produces the best results in adult dogs that fail to respond to medical management. Prognosis is excellent, with approximately 95% of dogs having no complications and a good to excellent long term outcome. Complications rarely occur but include infection, loosening of the implants, and luxation of the femoral component from the acetabular cup. Additional surgery is required to treat these complications. An approach is made to the hip joint in a rigorously sterile environment. The diseased femoral head is removed by use of a bone saw and sharp dissection. 
and the diseased articular cartilage of the acetabulum is removed by a specially designed drilling instrument. A properly sized acetabular prosthesis is then secured into the acetabulum, and an appropriately sized femoral stem prosthesis is driven into the reamed femoral shaft. Following placement of the proper sized head to the femoral prosthesis, the artificial joint is reduced and manipulated through a full range of motion. Postoperatively, the prostheses are assessed radiographically for proper placement, and the patient enjoys a near normal use of the replacement joint. Clinical evidence suggests that canine total hip arthroplasty has a high rate of success in the alleviation of pain and restoration of function. By substitution of a prosthesis for the acetabulum as well as for both the femoral head and neck, normal weight bearing activities can be maintained but without the anatomical structures responsible for generating pain and restricting range of motion. Femoral head and neck ostectomy, or FHO, provides a salvage surgical option for treating dogs with leg perthes disease, end stage osteoarthritis, or severe trauma to the hip joint. Postoperative physical therapy is essential to a good outcome in this procedure, i.e., passive range of motion exercises, walking, swimming, and exercises on an underwater treadmill to increase muscle mass and improve the hip's range of motion. Dogs with good to excellent muscle mass recover well from this procedure with a 70 to 80 percent return of limb function. Dogs with poor muscle mass may have a good surgical outcome, but they will require an increased duration of postoperative physical therapy. Triple pelvic osteotomy, or TPO, is appropriate for young dogs with clinical signs of hip dysplasia, but minimal radiographic evidence of osteoarthritis. Further, these dogs should have a crisp ortolani maneuver. The veterinarian cuts the pubis, ischium, and ilium and applies a 20, 30, or 40 degree torqued plate to the ileal fragments. The result is an increased dorsal cover of the acetabulum over the head of the femur. In theory, this will decrease the joint laxity, subsequent subluxation, and decrease the clinical signs of hip dysplasia.